Do you think now the Prime it. Minister's gone, I can take this shirt off, put a T-shirt back on? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to do, do that. Do you fancy that? I, uh, I don't like grown-up clothes. <laughs> I don't like them at all. Uh, welcome back. Now, all this month, she's been taking a look around at some of the nation's most loved filming locations. And today, as Joanna Page continues her jet-setting tour, she's visiting a palace that starred in Harry Potter, Mission Impossible, and even the James Bond movies. I am on a set jetting adventure, exploring some of the top filming locations in Europe. Whether it be busy train stations, sleepy Yorkshire towns, or historical buildings, virtually anywhere can be the setting for your favourite film and TV shows. And in this series, I'm going to be visiting some of my favourites. Today I feel like royalty, as I am somewhere very special which has played host to some of the biggest blockbusters of all time, Blenheim Palace. I'm starting my movie scene soiree inside this stunning 18th century building. And this main entrance alone feels like you've immediately walked into a film set. Kate Ballinger is the keeper of collections at Blenheim. Part of her job is to work alongside producers and directors to make the most of the building, and most importantly, ensure that nothing gets damaged during filming. What is it like when you have a film and TV crew here? It is really, really challenging, because obviously it involves hundreds of people, lots and lots of equipment. We have a lot of precious things around, and sometimes people forget where they are. If I was filming in here, and then you've got your costume on, and you start to settle in a bit, it just ends up feeling like home. So you've actually had James Bond here. Yes. What was that like? That was really, really exciting. Most of the action happened outside, but big action sequences. A lot of the scenes were shot at night, so huge light sources were constructed by the team and put into place to help create the aesthetic. The ultimate setting for 007. The car went at high speed a number of times through one of our arches, which isn't very large. So, yeah, you held your breath every time just to make sure they got through safely and didn't damage the building. I know it must have been like, oh my gosh, there's Daniel Craig. But, Daniel, can you just please calm down a bit? Yes. You've got to be kidding me. Wow, this is absolutely incredible. Is this the room that Mission Impossible was filmed in? Yes. Tom Cruise, with a sizeable cast and crew, descended on the palace when shooting the charity ball scene. The long library was transformed into the perfect location for a grand party. Due to adverse weather conditions, the shots of the guests arriving in the main court were said to have taken no fewer than 30 attempts. I was lucky enough to be able to meet Tom Cruise, oh who is goodness. really lovely. Blenheim Palace, it's also been portrayed as the royal residence of our own monarchy. Blenheim has been transformed into Buckingham Palace no fewer than five times, most notably in the young Victoria. The striking similarities of this splendid building to Buckingham Palace mean that directors and set designers have a slightly easier job of making it look like it. Rather than creating fake set frontage, the team brilliantly transformed this place into the home of Queen Victoria. I am meeting with Gavin Bouquet, who was the production designer for another of Blenheim's most famous films. Gulliver's Travels. The main role of a production designer is to help create all the environments that you see behind and in front of the actors. And that can be a mixture of shooting on location, like we did here for Gulliver's, or designing sets and building them in a stage. We had one character, Jack Black as Gulliver, who was 120 feet tall. This is insane. OK, enough. And obviously the Lilliputians were that size, three and a half inches compared to him. He was here, but he wasn't really in any scenes because he's too big, so he would often be against a green screen over the side of the courtyard doing his little bit, which the visual effects people would then drop in sort of giant. There's one point in the script where the, this corner of the palace caught on fire. The only way the Lilliputians could think of putting the fire out was to ask Gulliver to drop his shorts. Don't worry. Yes. And we out the fire yes. on that basis. So we had a lot of very interesting <laughs> discussions with the special effects department about how high should the we come out. Oh, wow! And even what colour. Oh you my know. goodness, that's amazing. Yes. You just don't even think yes. that that sort of detail comes into it, it was do done you? For it was done for real, if you see the film. Billy Connolly, James and Chris Adowd <laughs> were specifically weed on. Yeah, it's working! This was one of the early concept designs we did for Blenheim, where we were adapting Blenheim 
with the roof details to be a little bit more fanciful. Yes. But once Rob Letterman, the director, got here and saw the real place, he was so knocked out by it that yeah. we decided not to do that. One of the first sort of composites we did showing how Jack at a size would fit in. And we did lots of experiments of how big he is because there's no rule about how big Gulliver was. I originally auditioned for the Emily Blunt part. We are to have a victory for you. So if they make a second one, put a good word in for me. <laughs> yeah, but only if you get me as an extra in any future, Gavin oh and Stacey. Oh my goodness, I'd have you in a heartbeat. <laughs> Whilst the main building is definitely the highlight here at Blenheim, it's not the only filming spot on the grounds. The surrounding land has also played a starring role. This epic tree was in Harry Potter. The size and dominance of the tree provide the ideal natural setting, and the spellbinding grounds surrounding it give it a mysterious feel of wizardry. Blenheim Palace is undoubtedly one of our most beautiful buildings and a top spot for film and TV productions. I think I will just put on my corset, get into character, and wait for my starring role. Oh, it's beautiful. I've been there, you know. It's gorgeous, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it gorgeous? Do you know, I was just thinking between Jean and Scotland and those lovely images and those images there, you'd kind of be tempted to stay at home a little bit this summer, wouldn't you? Yeah, Do a bit of totally. exploring. Totally. Yeah, I think It was so. a bit like when we was in Covid and we just went on holiday yeah, here. I, I liked, liked it. it. Yeah. I liked it too. You haven't been over to Ireland yet, though, have you? No, I've been to Ireland about three times. Yeah. Oh, you didn't ring, though. <laughs> <laughs> I will next time. It's fine. I will next it's time. <laughs> no, in just a moment. You better. Nick Ferrari.